Okay, right, let's go talk to Matthew, because we kind of need to by this point. <sighs> Back so soon, Professor? Matthew, I was wondering if you knew anything that could point us in the direction of the Golden Apple. Anything you know would be a great help. For example, did the Baron say anything before he passed away? Okay. Okay. Ingrid. I beg your pardon, sir? Ingrid? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good grief. Walking around by the village shop. Do a favour and tell us that I send my regards. Certainly we'll pass on the message. Thank you for all your help, Matthew. Yeah, I think it was. Hmm. Ah, oh, yes. Let's go find the old girl. Yes, it is. Right outside the manor. Let's get the letters away. Anymore. More journalists. The nanny. Talking with Matthew revealed that the Reinholds formerly had another servant in their employ. Unless I'm mistaken, Matthew was referring to Ingrid, the nanny in that photo we saw earlier. She's usually out by the village shop at this time of day, so finding her shouldn't prove too difficult. <sighs> there she is. Oh, goodness me, if it isn't Dem, Mr. Um, name's Leighton, madam. Earlier we were talking to the butler at Red Hall Manor, told us he used to work there, but I'd very much like to hear anything about the Baron. Oh? Yes, we'd like to know, please. That would be ideal, madam. Uh, okay. The way Master Reinhardt's former wife would carry on, this it almost seemed like children. You'd never seen a man so in love as Master Reinhardt. When she passed away, Flora was all the Baron had left. Remember about So we raised that little bit of a The things he'd bring home for her, towards blah, blah, blah. He's high spirits in those days. He really wanted to give her all the affection in the world. Yeah, where has Flora gone? At the mansion well after she stopped working with the Reinhardt. Some would say Lady Dahlia put Flora on the street to keep the family riches to herself. But that's nonsense. After all, the Baron cared about Flora so much. No, the grave of the Baron's former wife is located in the Manor Garden. Right. Thank you, Madam Knight. You've been extremely helpful. Let's get back to the Manor! The grave might hold a few clues. Flora's mother. Ingrid told us the story of how Flora's mother passed from this world. The Baron must have truly loved his former wife, for her grave lies within his garden, presuming to be so that even in her death. Even after death, she would still be close by. So sweet! Romantic! Oh. What's Matthew doing outside? Good day, Professor. Were you able to track down Ingrid? Yes, we did. In fact, we were just speaking with her. I mean, no stretch, but she said the grave of the Baron's former wife is here. Do you have any knowledge of it? Oh, okay. Um, would you mind if we came along to have a look? Okay, thank you, Matthew. Oh wow, that's so pretty. Of course we will, Matthew. This is Lady Viola's grave. The late Baron rests his whole time to keep his place in proper order when she died. Here sleeps Viola, my one true love. This actually looks so much like Lady Dahlia, it's hard to believe it's someone else. Pagma Flora is just a tiny little thing, Lady Viola used to take it to the park. Some of the flowers in the garden grew from the ones Flora planted here for her mother. The man's diary is in the lady's room. It's possible it might contain some information. Thank you, Matthew. I'll be sure to give it a once over later. Let's head back to get into the manor. The place was so sad. More journalists. Beautiful grave. Lady Viola's grave is a truly beautiful place. The Baron's devotion and love for her is reflected in every detail of the place. Matthew mentioned that the Baron kept a diary detailing his thoughts. If we can find it, I imagine there is much we could learn from its pages. Uh huh. A lot of journal entries today. In we go. 
the stairs, into Lady Dahlia's room, and look over here. This must be the diary that Matthew spoke of. I have to admit, he seems to know where everything in the manor is. There's something about reading someone else's diary that doesn't seem proper, but the investigation must continue, so... The craftsmanship of it is simply remarkable. It reminds me of my sweet Viola when she was alive. What do you suppose it refers to? I don't know. Flora doesn't seem to, doesn't like the thing at all. I've seen her run away from it on more occasions. Recently, she spends more time playing by dear Violet's grave than with it. I'm sad to say, I doubt Flora will ever take to it. I can't blame her. Changed its personality. I felt terrible for forcing that change on Flora. I just can't bear it anymore. Viola, though, can never be another. You're my first, my one, my only. I'm not sure what it means either, but it is vital. I collapsed some days ago and have been bedridden ever since. I feel as if I have failed Flora as a father. I can only hope that when I am gone, the people of the village look after Flora and care for her as I did. It seems I am not long for this world, and might the time has come for me to say goodbye to my little Flora. I've left everything in Bruno's care now. Flora, I pray you find happiness in life. I've disclosed the location of the secret place in a note that I've left with an old friend. It's in my most fervent hope that the secret the Golden Apple finds it and grants this wish. Found a writing with an old friend. You see this person out, please. That's always like a thing. Any good investigation starts on the street. We just have to ask everyone in the village about the matter. Um, what? <laughs> of course, Professor. Any good direction? Investigation in this direction? Let's start by asking Ingrid a few questions. Okay. Let's go. Oh, where did you guys come from? The Baron's Diary. The pages of Baron Reinhold's diary were filled with passages reflecting upon his deep love for his child and late wife. We also discovered that the Baron left a note disclosing the location of the Golden Apple in the possession of a good friend of his. Perhaps Ingrid knows this friend of the Baron's. Hmm. This shall be interesting. Anyway, let's leave the manor. I'm getting a bit sick of this place now. <laughs> oh, there she is! Oh, look who it is! Professor Ladle! Leighton, madam. <laughs> yes, it's Leighton. Oh, I did you? Oh, that's nice. Yes, we, we do. Uh, do you happen to know who Baron Reinhold considered as his close friend? His friend, you say? Well, he wasn't exactly what you'd call a social butterfly. Uh, there's a pony fellow in pays a few minutes to mention. Okay. Yes, the guy with the little moustache. He's probably, yeah, he probably is still hanging around that fork. Lazy sod. Oh my god, more German, talking with Ingrid. Sadly, even Ingrid, despite her intimate ties with the Reinhold family, seemed to know nothing that would help our investigation. Ingrid recommended we pay his opponent a visit, and so we shall. Really though, does that man ever have anything useful to say? Ooh, Cassie, Professor. Anyway, let, let us go find Zapone. Considering he is our only lead. <laughs> as annoying that is, that is. Oh, Rodney. Maybe? Yes? No? Hidden puzzle? Pink coin. And Rodney. Great. As you come to the village, will I strongly advise you to follow procedure and solve this puzzle? God, you're boring! Puzzle 064, Odd Equations. Under certain conditions, these strange equations are correct. 8 minus 2 equals... 8 minus 6 equals 2. 8 plus 6 also equals 2. 7 plus 6 equals... 4. 1. Because it's to do with time. Luke, here's my answer. Ta-da! Every puzzle has, has an, an answer. answer. Yes, 8 o'clock minus 6 is 2 o'clock. 8 o'clock plus 6 is 2. And 7 plus 6 equals 1. Quite right. <laughs> well, that's quite interesting. I'll do nicely now, please vacate the premises. Okay. Rude. Uh, 
There's another hidden coin, and let's look at the cat and mouse again, because this is quite fun. That cat and mouse seem to get on pretty well, don't they? Do you think so? I would have guessed the cat was tormenting that poor mouse. And if you say they're friendly, I'll believe you. Uh. Oh, you're giving us a puzzle, Luke? Right, 065, letters and numbers. Uh, A equals 2, B equals 3, C equals 3. D equals four. What's E? Five. Because I do believe it's that the number do of it. um, panels next to it. Critical I'm thinking is it. the key to success. Yes. Yeah, it's the number of panels directly touching it. Mhm. Mm oh, it was too far too easy, Luke. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. Hehe, <laughs> good afternoon, sir. Hey, I'll tell you a secret if you solve this puzzle for me. It's a really tricky one. Yeah, I'll be the judge of that, Doc. 0665 borrowers. Each of these five people has borrowed money from one another and each has lent money to one of the others. One, B borrowed money from A. Oh, who borrowed? Who did A borrow money from? It's D. There we go. There we do go. Yay! Another puzzle solved. And quite rightly so, too. Yeah, if you trace the flow of money, that's how it happens. Feel it. Oh! Feeds its victim nasty food before it pounces. Haggis ice cream with gravy jelly. Ugh! I don't know why you'd need all those people. It's quite interesting. Oh, I think Lucy's got another puzzle for us. Um, Lucy, we just talked to you. Ugh. Oh, 067, how many sweets? Three boys are talking about how sweets. B has the most. C gave one sweet that would have twice as many as A. It'd be better if B gave me two, then we'd all have the same amount. How many sweets were there in total? Oh, God, it's, um... Nine. <laughs> Luke, here's yeah. my answer. Yay! Every puzzle has an answer. Yes, it does. 3 plus 5 plus 1 equals 9. You see... Oh, is that all you had to do to work it out? Why did I think of that? Don't tell Adrian we told you that... Okay. That girl's a bitch anyway, so we won't... Don't worry about it, love. Uh, hint coin. And here's the pony with his fancy little moustache. Close friends of the Baron? Well, I myself had the pleasure of meeting the Baron a few times. But you weren't a close friend. Great. Can you think of anyone at all friendly? Ugh. Shut up. Nope, he can't tell us much of anything, he's useless. Hmm. Definitely a resident to take Mr. So we'll find them eventually. I'm quite sure of that. A total disappointment. As I suspected, Zapong hadn't a single piece of good advice for us regarding the Baron's mystery friend. If we are to find the individual we seek, it looks like we'll have need to rely on the time honored technique of taking to the streets and talking to the villagers. Great. Boom. Ooh, scrap of paper. There's something on the ground here of littering. Of course we will, Professor. The boss complimented my latest model today. He's a good guy and he's given me a new sense of purpose. I'm sure this is my true calling. I want to perfect my skills so I can repay the man for his generosity. Sounds a great deal like a diary entry, doesn't it? The boss. He was probably under the employee of the Baron. I've constructed the models to fit every situation, just like the boss planned to. I have this to smile when I see how... Uh, what? Hmm. This is very interesting. More hint coins! And let's talk to Gerard. Not being a member of high society myself, I've never had so much of a conversation with Baron Reinhold. Oh, uh, okay. Are you feeling well, sir? Right. Do you know what's causing it at all? 
Sounds like you say Mr. Someone disappears. Ooh. Probably just a load of poppycock. Certainly is very interesting and curious. Yeah, why would that happen? Hmm. Let's talk to Gerard again and get a puzzle. Thanks, 